This is a big fish fly. You should tie it. What's up everybody? Main Fly Guys here. Today I'm going to show you how I make my eel pattern. You know, <clears throat> this started because I was out with a friend and he was throwing this like 14 inch sluggo. And you know, it looks just like this. It looks, you know, it's just a straight black eel. And he was catching massive 40, 45 inch stripers with it. So I said, well, why not make a fly that does, imitates a sluggo almost, you know? So I'm gonna show you how to make this today. Um, here we go. All right, had to do a shirt change. Video wasn't coming out great. So this is a 6 aught fire hole 811. Nope, I lied. It's an 802P 6 aught. And this I'm actually tying for a friend, um, Brian Rosa from Origin Outfitters. Great guy, great striper guide. Um, and so he wanted one with a rattle. So I'm putting a rattle at the back of the hook here. Um, I'm just gonna put it on there sort of loosely for now, uh, cause we're gonna have to do all kinds of crazy stuff um, to uh, get this fly to be set up and how I want it. So, but he wanted a rattle, so I'm putting, this is a just a plastic rattle or a glass. No, it's plastic. Um, but when you add rattles, what I like to do is just come in with a heavy amount of super glue. Boom. Put that rattle on there. Make sure it's straight. That's pretty straight. Not as straight as I'd like, but yeah, it's fine. Uh, so I put a, a lot of super glue. We're going to come back in and, and cover this again. But uh, I like to do the rattles first because this super glue takes a little bit to dry. So while we're doing the back half of the eel, this can set properly. Okay, so the back half here, I do two sections of 35 millimeter shanks. So this is <clears throat> this is a 35 millimeter shank. It's going to be the back half, and this fly needs to be. It was requested to be 10 to 12 inches long. So what I like to do is use thin feathers. These I dye myself. They're from a uh, saddle hackle, uh, dry fly hackle, but they're feathers that I'm t not gonna use, you know, I'm not gonna use. So they're like six inches long, um, but I'm never gonna use them for dry fly because the fibers are too long. So that's what I like to use. First, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of SF blind, this is black. This will be kind of added throughout the pattern to give it some, some flash. Um, just very, very minimal though, very, very minimal. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just double it over right in the back. And so if, you know, this is where I take a lot of care to uh, make sure that this is the right length as far as measurements are concerned. So when this fly is done, the back half of this will be about 10 to 12 inches from the front of the fly. So I just put this little tail on. Boom, great. Now what I'll do is I'll come in with some thicker feathers. These are bugger, they're about four or five, maybe six inches long. I'll come in with a thicker feather Tie that on. I kind of do one on each side. Try to get ones that are approximately the same length. And I just lay them flat on the side there. Great. So now I have sort of this, this tail um, consisted of these fibers and this now what I will do is I'll take one of the longer fibers here. So here's one of my six inch, it might even be longer than six inches. Um, 
and I'll lay it over the side again just like this. What this does, because this fly is primarily going to consist of bucktail, and so bucktail adds a lot of bulk to it. You know it adds a lot of that bulk, but it doesn't flow very well. There's not a lot of movement, and so adding in these these thin, long feathers adds a lot of movement. Now this pattern is primarily fished in the dark. So you might be saying, well, Greg, if they're fished in the dark, what does movement matter? And I think it matters a whole lot. Um, I think the bucktail is good to draw fish in because they feel that movement, right? They, they use that lateral line for movement. However, <clears throat> once they get close enough to it, you know, they can see it. It's not like they can't see these flies. They're, you know, they've been adapted to this type of environment for millions of years. They can see it. And so I think that movement really helps. And that's why like a sluggo has a lot of movement. You know, it's very, it whips around in the water and, and that that movement really entices them. So now what we're going to do is a series of steps all the way to the hook okay so i'm going to show you the step once and then i'm just going to fast forward it through the step so here's what we're going to do i'm going to lay down some bucktail here and i'm just going to do a 360 wrap with it let me get those so i'm just going to wrap it around now it's an eel all right it's an eel. So I don't really want my tips to spray out. I only want them to do this. I want them to just sort of very gradually make a tube almost, right? Like an eel. I do not want them to, uh, to spray out. So I am pretty much only going to use deer fur from the tips, or deer bucktail here from the tips of my bucktails. I won't be using it um, from the base because then it will flare out. So for the first part, and even when we get later down the line, I'm only going to use these tips. Right? So here's the step. That's step one of the step. Can kind of get confusing. I'm not putting anything in between there. I want it to be kind of sparse. Again, take another clump of bucktail, 360 degrees. Let's try to get that all secured around. Great. You see I'm going back over the, just a little bit to make it, see how it's nice and streamlined. The guy that I'm making this for, Brian Rose of Origin Outfitters, he's a striper guide, um, and he knows exactly what the stripers want. And uh, it's funny, he's also a videographer. He's great, great, great with a camera. And uh, I'm looking at this and I see this black, and it's like, he would call them crushed blacks, and he says they're terrible for video. <laughs> okay, so you have two clumps of bucktail in there, right? Two clumps of bucktail. Now, what we're gonna do is take black flash. This has no, sh it's just a uh, glossy black. And I'm gonna take two strands, two strands, and I'm gonna lay it down on each side, 50-50, great. I just do two each time, because you're gonna do this a few times. Okay. And then repeat. And that's it. Those are the steps. So then you're going to repeat this all the way up to the hook. And I'm only going to do one more shank. So I'm going to do one more 35 millimeter shank. Boom. So here's my I'll cut this. This will be my last bucktail um, for this shank. All right. 
So I am starting my second shank here. This will be the final shank that I do before I get to the actual hook. I like to, at each transition point, add in one of those longer feathers. Just keeps up with that flow. So I take a longer feather here and I just put it right on the side. That's a crappy one. This one ain't great either, but put that longer feather right on the side. Great. So I do this at each transition point, so I do it once more at the hook. Alright. Okay. So up next in our step we have our bucktail which if I could get the same fibers, that'd be great. And I, I, people always ask like, well, how much bucktail do you take? For this pattern, I try to stay really sparse because I'm gonna be casting it at night. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it helps, it's just sort of like a beast fly where you're just building layers, you know, you're just building layers. Get over that, there we go. How's that? Is that all right? Maybe we should go back a little, there we go. So I just build layers. So that's our second bucktail in the step. Come in now with that black flash again. This is gonna be one of my longer videos for sure. But you know what they say. Nobody has anything better to do with their lives, so just watch fly tying videos. I've been down that rabbit hole. Okay, there's that. Now I'm, I've got it pretty cylind, you know, pretty thin out back. So now I'm heading towards the front of the hook. So I'm gonna add. I'm still gonna make it lay pretty much flat onto the hook, but I do want it to start bulking up just a just a wee bit. I mean, just a teeny teeny bit. So when I tie in my blacks, I'm gonna choose a little bit lower down. onto the bucktail. See that? Just a just a smidge. Not much. Not much. Should have used. But a little bit. And again, this is gonna be used at night, so I'm not too I'm not like super worried about these one, you can't really see them, and two, I'm not super worried about in between our bulky ties. I just want to make sure the material is caught um, because they're covered up and yeah, they don't really add anything. So I'm going to go right to the very end here. And I'm going to add in our final, see if I can get some our final tie-in point on this. So I like to go three, three, and then three on the hook as well. Oh yeah, that's gonna be just fine. Let's push that around. What I like to do to get it around 360 is push right in the middle, pinch on the side. Push right in the middle, pinch on the sides. If it's on a bare hook, it will spin like so which is great. Makes it easy to get a 360 degree um, wrap around. And so now we remember what comes after our second, second tie-in of deer hair, our black. 
This time I'm going to do something a little different though. I'm going to go over the middle, about the full length, pretty close to the full length at least. I'm going to go right over the middle, and then I'm going to come underneath. This will add just some I'm going to cut these a little shorter. This will just add some flowy movement in a 360 degree direction. So now we have flowy movement on top, on bottom, and I'm hoping, well, I don't hope, I know, that when it's in the water, it moves eel-like. It's very eel-like. Um, the swimming form is called Anguilidae. It's this motion that kind of looks like this, or like this. Uh, and this fly does that motion, partly because of the flowy nature of the materials and partly because of the way that it's set up. Okay, so, boom. I'm telling you, you do not need flash. Don't, don't, don't add flash. Stop adding flash to your flies. You don't need flash. Before we move on, here's what I have. I have nylon coated 30 pound bite wire, okay? I'm gonna slide it up through the hook, uh, through the eye of my shank. And then I'm gonna take these little beads and slip them on through both, through both wires. All right, see how it sits in there back like that? I'm gonna do it with two. These are glow in the dark beads, if you would believe it or not, pretty crazy. It's about to get really crazy up in here. So these will just help with the movement. I'm gonna tie it pretty tight to the hook. That way this won't foul as much. Um, and also it adds a little glow in the dark spot. Do stripers like glow in the dark? I don't know. Okay. This is where things get a little crazy. So we're back to our thing. It's not even dry yet, which is whatever. We're gonna go over, but we're gonna get down. I got super glue on my hand. God dang it. We're gonna go down behind it, all right? And what we're gonna do, again, this uh, this does have an up and down position, so make sure you don't flip it, right? Remember these longer strands of the top black flash should be on top. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line it up and you're going to secure it with just a, two or three loose wraps to try and set the wire up. And that looks pretty good right there. that look okay? Let's see here. A little bit more forward. That looks great. So it's going to be just like this. All right. And what you're going to do is you are going to wrap all the way forward. Now there's no hook back here. So there's n this it should be secured, but it doesn't need to be really, really tightly secured because there shouldn't be anything pulling on this, all right? The hook is here. So what I do is wrap it up tight, trim off these little front pieces out front, come in, and then just do a bunch of securing wraps like so. All right, boom. Bunch of securing wraps. Don't break the thread on the tips that are very sharp. Great. So now it's in there pretty securely. Boom. <coughs> okay, so we're in there pretty securely. Everything is set up nice and neat here. Again, I like to use uh, feathers in these transition zones. You can use skinny ones here or fat ones to sort of cover up this if you'd like. 
doesn't really matter. I'm going to use skinny ones because I like the way they wiggle wiggle. Secure those on like so. Excuse me. Oh, oh, put that right there on the side of that. How are we looking? Oh, go gorgeous. Great. Now the tough part. We are going to do wraps of deer hair. I'm going to try to find slightly longer fibers because if I could I'd like to cover this up, this little gap. Although it's not a huge deal, but That's pretty decent. Again, this might take some time to get all the fibers pretty much all the way around, at least to the to the hook. So you're gonna wrap your fibers until they run into this hook here. That ain't too shabby. How are we looking on that side? Not too bad at all. If I could get these tips in now. So it'll look something like this. Great. Blocked up, nice feathers there. Okay, good. There's one. We're gonna do the same old thing. Try to find similar length fibers. Snippetos. Wrapping around a rattle. I feel like that's innovative, but I might have gone too parse on this one. My cat just knocked something over. Good, good. Love that. How's that looking? Pretty good. Still very eel like. Okay. I'm going to come to the front here. I'm going to come to the front. I'm going to skip out on the black flowy things for right now. What I'm going to do now is find some really oversized fibers, some really long fibers. Um, and I want them to flay out. Like I, I want them to poof out. And I'm going to do a uh, bullet tie. So what I'm going to do, I want it to be just as long as the rest can, is I'm going to tie it in, like with the tips backwards here. I'm going to straighten them out a little bit. So I'm going to tie it tips backwards. Push, do the same technique, push, boom. Make sure it's around 360 degrees. I'm gonna come in, do a reverse tie, push it back with my super duper fancy reverse tie tool. Shabang! There it goes. See that? See that? Whew. Okay. Bullet tie, if I can. Might have some trouble here. Okay, catch those loose fibers. Okay, that's great. These fibers are a little damp. What's going on over here? Actually, that's fine. That looks great. So see how they're just a little bit bulkier? Because when they're in the water, you know, they're gonna be slicked down a little bit. <coughs> this bulkiness, this is what's pushing that water. Okay. 
Alrighty then. Now, this is called a magic head. This pushes water. Like water can get through these bucktail. Water cannot get through this magic head. So what I do, I can't get it onto this hook. It's stuck. It gets stuck right there. So what I do is I cut a slit in the top of it. This allows a little bit of an expansion. Boof, slips right on. So now what I have, <clears throat> oops, forgot to, forgot to tie off my thread, silly me. So now what I have is basically a bulletproof, look at that, that pushes water. Stripers are going to be able to feel that from half a mile away. So what you do is all you do is catch that magic bullet head with your thread and that puppy ain't going nowhere. You ain't going nowhere. Okay. Really secure it down. You can obviously super glue it or whatever glue you use if you feel you must. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to do bullet points the rest of the way because I want to cover up this clear plastic. So what I actually do is I take some of these bottom fibers, take a good clump of them, the longer fibers, and I match them up so that they cover, they, they match the length of our little magic head here. This way, it's just a good covering. It's also super bulky. See that? It just adds a good sort of protection layer there. I'll go back to make sure it's really flat on it. See how flat? I mean, it's literally flat right on it. And then we'll come in, do our bullet point tie-in. See that? Now that is going to push some freaking water, man. That is what we're talking about. Oh, you f <laughs> Now we have that tied in. That, I mean, that water literally can't penetrate that. So it's going to, it pushes a ton of water. So now we just come in and I'm going to try to find some wavy bucktail, or at least crimped. That looks pretty good. And I'm basically just going to try to match that same line. Just doing a regular, it doesn't really matter what you tie in now because everything that you tie in is going to fall right on to that magic head. Cut these very short. And now you have the option. What would you do? Would you add eyes to it? Would you add in another clump of deer hair? How about another feather? It's really up to you in this last little bit here. What you want to do. What do you feel like doing? For me, I usually add in one more feather. Down the side here. Just right down the side.
right down the side. Boom. I almost never add eyes to it because I don't know. I, I don't think it needs eyes. Um, but anyways, I'm going to go shape this. I typically kill it right here. Um, it's black. It's got everything it needs. It's dark. It's big. It's streamlined. Looks very eel-like. But it does require, require some shaping, like for these front fibers. So I'll go shape it for a little bit, let it dry overnight, you know. But let's take a peek, shall we? Can we take a peek? Oh, oh, baby. Ain't that something. Look at that puppy. Boom. Shakes. Streamline. Pushes a ton of water. And it's really not that heavy as far as the fly is concerned. What makes it heavy is the rattle. That's about it. But that that's it right there. Whew. This. This. See, do you see how it's more shaped here? This is what happens after you use them for a little bit. It gets this nice tapered shape. This will do the same after I go and shape it. It'll have this nice laid down sort of eel-like shape. Um, these catch fish, big fish. Little fish don't eat these. Big fish eat these. This is a big fish fly. You should tie it. Thank you for watching.